If you marry in this country, you, you basically uh, uh, go to a local Monola Sao and you say, <laughs> Monola Sao, <laughs> get us married. He'll get you married, but what you've got to be careful is that that marriage is not recognized and you are treated in English law as, as, uh, as boyfriend and girlfriend. Or what they call in law cohabitees. You are cohabitees. There are rights for cohabitees, but not, in, uh, uh, not as strong as married people. <laughs> So, take an example, <coughs> a couple who have been living 30 years together as a result of a marriage <coughs> and a couple who have been living 30 years without a marriage, English law says the one who has been living with marriage have more rights and the one who has been living without marriage have less rights. So, uh, there's advantages and disadvantages but the bottom line is they don't have the same rights as do married couples have. <coughs> right, there is a question. If a woman asks, uh, asks her husband for a divorce because he isn't that good looking, uh, but very... Uh, uh, sorry, that, but that he's not very good looking, but very good in all things, like the caring of the children, will she get punishment? Let me just clarify this issue. You see, here again we arrive at a juncture where culture and religion must be divided. In culture, a woman who is divorced, there is a stigma on her that, oh, she's divorced. But in Islamic law, there's no stigma. A lot of people, they think that it's their own impression that by doing divorce, it's gonna. By going through a divorce, it's gonna. The answer is that by undergoing a divorce, it's not gonna. Allah doesn't like it, but it's not gonna. You know, when you say something is gonna, we say in Arabic, it is fisk. Fisk means a person who does it is a fasik. But by going through a divorce, I repeat, is not a sin. Allah doesn't like it, but it's not a sin. I must make that very clear to you. But the fact that Allah doesn't like it, doesn't mean to say now you say, well, as long as it's not a sin, I can go ahead. You've got to be careful. If you really love Allah, you will want to know what He likes and what He dislikes. So if He dislikes divorce, you'll be very careful. But if, if I understand the question to be on two ways, there could be two scenarios. One, that the husband is good looking and he doesn't look after the children. And the second scenario is, as the question asks, um, he <coughs> I have to understand this question again. First scenario is he isn't good looking but he looks after the children. The second scenario is he is good looking. Am I saying making sense? <laughs> he is good looking but he looks after the children. Anyway. The question is looks. How important are looks? Can a woman divorce her husband because of his looks? Now, if you go and ask Hadith out in the street this question, he's going to say, oh, tabah, tabah. <laughs> You don't even talk about this. So, tough look, you're, you know, brand landed with him, and that's the end of it. But, let me tell you a Hadith. Because everything must be traced back to the Quran and the Sunnah. A woman came to the Prophet. It's probably a hadith which very rarely um, is explained in mosques and otherwise. But, you know, it's a hadith. It's a very authentic hadith. A woman came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, Ya Rasulullah ﷺ, I hate the face of my husband so much. I hate his guts so much that if I didn't have the fear of Allah in my heart, I hate him so much I would spit on his face. Now, she said this to the Prophet The Prophet didn't say, you know what, well, let's talk about re you know, the reconciliation. Or well, let me you know, try to paint this picture of his face in a nice way to you. She said, I don't like his face. He's so ugly and I, don't, I hate his guts. So what did the Prophet do? He called the husband. He said, come here. He said, divorce her. She said, I want to be with you. And 
that guy, that Sa'abi, then divorced her. But before the divorce, he said to her, to, to, to the woman, did he give you anything as meher? She said, yeah, he gave me a garden. So then he told the woman, okay, because you want the divorce, give him the garden back. So she gave him the deeds of the garden, and he said, now divorce her. What does this hadith tell you? This hadith tells you that at the end of the day, all right, <coughs> looks are something, you know, in the society that we live in, looks and the impression of looks is so distorted because of the idea of fashion. You know, a person who may be otherwise good looking, but because he doesn't adhere to fashion is, more, is called backward. And a person who's you know, I, mean, I don't know whether I should use these words, good or good looking or ugly looking. But a person who's absolutely ugly looking, and all he does is he fashions himself, and he's got a Giorgio Armani jacket, he looks good. And he's got probably a ring in his that, an ear or his nose or somewhere else. Oh, he's in, he's, you know, he's the in guy. And nonsense. At the end of the day, good looking is based on the eye of the perceiver. It's not based on, you know, is he really good looking? But what you've got to be careful of is this, that looks are part of something when you look at to marry someone, but they're not end all. But if you find that you're in a scenario that you can't tolerate that at all, then rather be in marriage and fight with him every day for some reason or another, not because he's a bad guy, but because you just can't stand him anymore, then Islamic law does allow you, and there is no punishment, if you go for a divorce? I hope that answers the question. That's a very practical question. And I know many people who are in marriages and they uh, fight with their husband every day of the week only to annoy them, wind them up, so one day comes and says, right, I'm at it. You're out. I say, yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's all I wanted. But if you want out of the marriage, don't play games. Be honest with him. Say, look, you know what? It ain't going anywhere. It's just, you walk your way, I walk my way. Why? Because the more you, you stay in that marriage and you, and you create problems, the only people who are going to suffer are the children.